What's hernian? Let's do it. So let's say we've got two of them. One looks like this. We have a W, which is the amount of rotation, and a V, which is the vector that stands for the axis of rotation. We'll call this quaternion R. And we've got another one. It's another vector with the axis of rotation. And another W. This will be WS and VS, whereas this was WR and VR. And you'll notice that the two axes of rotation are different, which is going to cause us some trouble. Uh, because we want to get, we want to add these two rotations together. This is what we couldn't do with uh, axis angle rotation. Uh, there was just no way to handle two rotations that had different axes. But when we multiply these two quaternions together, we will have a new quaternion that has handled the mismatched axes kind of magically. It's really weird. And let's look and see how it does it. I'm going to write this out longhand, OK? We have the W portion of the R plus I. And like right now, you're like, what, I? Hold on, what's I? You never told me about I. Hold your horses. I'll tell you about I at J and K. Uh, can't talk and do this at the same time. So this is what happens when we break the R quaternion out into its four parts. That's why it's a quaternion. It's got four parts. And the I, J, and K are imaginary, imaginary numbers. And we're going to multiply them by the S, W part of S plus I times X part of S plus J times y part of s plus k times z part of s. So what are imaginary numbers? Let's go over that real quick over here off to the side. Uh, imaginary numbers, there's actually nothing imaginary about them. They're actual numbers. And I, I can show you what, what i is equal to the square root of negative 1. That's what an imaginary number is. It's a, it's a real physical number. Um, and, I'll, and I'll try and give you an intuition for, for what they mean. Why do we have them? Suppose this is a real number line with 0 here, 1 here, 2 here, and so on. If you have, if you have a number at here, 1, on this point, and you want to shift it to the right, that's like adding. Okay, we're going to add 1 to it to shift it to the right. Now here it is at 2. If you want to shift it back to the left, you subtract. Okay, If we want to flip it, like reflect it around this zero line so that anything is over here, it's like a mirror, it's going to reflect. Now it's right there. That operation is multiplication by negative 1. Multiplication will reflect or scale just like it did to vectors and matrices when we studied those. Now what happens when you want to rotate this number? I want to take this 2 and rotate it just like this 90 degrees up to this line. What am I going to get? I'm going to get 2i. So rotating it 90 degrees counterclockwise is the same thing as multiplying it by i. And that's all an imaginary number is. It's like a rotated number. It should be called that, not imaginary. It should be called like a rotated number instead of an imaginary number. And when I mentioned uh, before that quaternions were four-dimensional, this is why. Because there's three imaginary dimensions of numbers, i, j, and k. So you can think of like this is this is the i axis right here, and these two guys are perpendicular, the i axis and the real axis. And then imagine you have a third axis that goes right through the middle. Can I get it to go through the middle? No, that's good enough. And this is the j axis, and it's perpendicular to the other two. And then you have a fourth axis, the k axis which is perpendicular to the other three. They're all perpendicular to each other, and this is the k-axis. I put a little hat up, up there out of habit. Um, it, it actually probably shouldn't even be there. So they're all perpendicular to each other, and the only way to get four perpendicular axes is to have a four-dimensional space. 
And uh, the reason the rotation idea, and I can't draw it here, obviously, I can't draw four dimensional space on a two dimensional uh, uh, drawing board that I have here, but just imagine, just imagine that it's four dimensional if you can. Uh, and the reason uh, that we're using quaternions for rotations is because that's what quaternions are imaginary numbers and imaginary numbers are rotated numbers and so rotated numbers are so great for to, to do rotations and that's why we're using quaternions to represent rotations uh, and so I, I can rotate rotate this one way to get I if I rotate it another way I'll get a K if I rotate it another way I'll get a J and so on and so let's get back here to our um, two quaternions that we're multiplying together. And at this point, you just go all the way back to algebra and you foil it out. So we'll get WR, this guy, times this guy, WS, plus WR times the next guy, IXS, plus, I didn't write the WR, WR, I'm squeeze it in there, plus WR times the next guy, J, Y, S, and so on and so on until I get to K, Z, R, K, Z, R, K, Z, S. Now, you can simplify this because K squared has a special value and, and there's all these weird tricks that you can do with, with imaginary numbers to simplify it, but I'm just going to skip all that stuff because we want to get to the good stuff which is the simplified result. It's going to look like this. WS, WR, that part didn't change, minus VS dot product with VR. And this part here is the W portion of the resulting Q vector. All right, now let's do the second half, and that'll be the W part of S times the V of R plus... W, R, V of S, plus the cross product of the two V's, cross V, S. And that is the vector part of the result. Now notice that there's this cross product here, V, R, cross V, S. If you remember from the cross product video, actually I don't know if I covered this in the cross product video, but I'm covering it now. Cross products are different if you flip them around. So VR cross VS is different than VS cross VR. So we're going to get a different answer here if we do S times R as if we do R times S. It's just like matrices. Order matters, right? And, um, and that makes sense if you think about it, if you think about rotations, if you rotate one way and then another, it's different than if you rotate the other way and then the first. You'll get a different result. So, so why did we do all this? Uh, if you remember, we have different axes of rotation, and we have to be able to handle that properly. If we rotate different ways, then it's all got to work out. And that's what this junk does down here. It generates a new axis of rotation, which if you rotate along that axis, it's the product of the other two rotations kind of put together. So I'm going to skip the code section for this video and we're going to go straight to the next video. Next week we're going to cover how to transform a point with a quaternion, how to rotate a point with a quaternion. We're almost at that point now, so I'll see you next week.